Hey, all right, everybody. This is Lee Lowell from smartoptionseller.com. Today is Sunday, December 12th, 2021. This is the Sunday edition of our Saturday synopsis. I was not around yesterday to make this video. I got some emails from people saying, Lee, where are you? What happened? Where's the Saturday synopsis? So it's okay. I'm here. Didn't have a chance to do it yesterday. So this is the Sunday version. What do we do in the the Saturday synopsis. Well, we look at charts, we look at the indexes, we look at individual stocks, we look at my setups, we look at technical indicators, support and resistance levels, and I let you see what I'm seeing. I'm trying to show you what I see on the charts, what helps me gauge uh, when I get into trades and when I get out of trades. So I'm here to make these free videos, try to show you what I'm seeing on the charts and maybe help you a little bit get better in your own trading. So let's just jump right in. This is what we do. Look at the charts. So let's open it up right now. We always start with the S&P 500 and we use the SPY, which is the exchange traded fund. This is, I look at daily charts, daily bar charts. I like to go over this little bit of information each time we get new people looking at these videos and they, they ask the same questions. What are, what's the charts? What do you use? What are your indicators? So let me just quickly go over what, what I'm using. I mostly look at the daily charts. I'm a little bit longer term trader. I'm not an intrad I am not an intraday trader. I'm not a day trader, not a swing trader. Uh, it's just too hard. It's too much volatility to to trade on that short term basis. So we look at daily charts and in our newsletters, we're we're more longer term. One to three months is our time frame. I think that gives us enough time for the stock to to move in the direction that we that I think it's intended to move to. So what we see here is a daily bar chart, open, high, low, close bars. I don't use candlesticks. I'm not a candlestick guy. Um, I have three moving averages on the charts. I use a 20 day, 50 day and a 200 day, all simple moving average, not exponential. Down here is the 14 day RSI indicator. It's an overbought, oversold indicator and it fluctuates between zero and 100. These two uh, horizontal lines are at the 80 level and 20 level. That is my gauge of what I consider overbought and oversold. You could move these lines in or out to your liking. The default is 75 and 25. And that was the, the original creator intended for those lines to be the overbought oversold. I bumped them out a little bit. All right. So what we do on the charts is that we look for patterns. We look at the price action, meaning which way the, the, the stock or index is moving. And we use these, 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 these patterns here, these W pattern, these congestion patterns, these channels to give us a gauge of when a stock is, is hitting some tops or hitting some lows. And since we're mostly bullish here at the smart option seller, we look for bullish type of trades. We sell put options. We sell put option spreads. And those are bullishly oriented trades. So obviously, I'm always looking for trade setups to let me know that, okay, this stock is on the down and is ready to move up. And that is what I use for my timing. And I use the charts to try to tell me when it's time to get in, when, when the stock is making a low and looking ready to bounce. And those are my higher probability setups, okay? Nothing's guaranteed. Nothing's going to work 100%. So you, you have to make sure that... You, you get in right, your timing is a little bit better. Um, so these, what I call higher probability trades, you're just getting in at a better time. So let's take a look at the, the S&P 500 first. That's what we do. We like to look at the overall market and where it's going, where it's trending. Uh, as we know, the market's just been going up, 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 making all time new highs many times this year. But as we're trying to make trades one to three months out in time, we have to pick times where the market is on a pullback and ready to make that next move higher. So what do we do? We draw these channels and we watch for the bounces. We will bounce off the bottom leg with the channel or a stock or index will bounce off uh, the moving average line. So I look for those. I look for the bounce off the channel or a bounce off the moving average line. Now the S&P 500 has gone up has been going up. We had this down move starting September, seasonal, seasonal bearishness in the market, September 1st to middle October, had the down move, and then the general markets just started going up again. Hit all time new highs back here in November. And we had this little down leg for about 
I don't know, a week and a half or so. And that really scared a lot of people for some reason. That's when the, the Omicron new COVID variant came out and it scared a lot of people. So this little move right here was very scary. And how do, we, how do I know that was scary? Well, if we look at the VIX, which we looked at last week, the VIX is the fear indicator. We saw that volatility spike. Now here in the VIX, when you see these big spikes, these short spikes, that means the market is dipping and people are getting scared. The VIX moves inversely to the general market. So when the market goes down, the VIX jumps. But it's very short-lived. And I talked about that last week. You can see these spikes only last for a couple days at a time. Now that little move, that little down move in the market we had for about a week and a half or so, really spiked the VIX pretty good. And I said, it's gonna last just a couple days. And that's what it did this week. The market rallied again and the VIX came down. So let's go back to the SPY. So if in context, if you're looking at the market as a whole, you would have seen this little down move right here and you'd be thinking, you know, what, what's, what was everyone so nervous about? It was just a little blip down in this long uptrend. But for whatever reason, it scared a lot of people because it was COVID, it, it, it was dealing with COVID. And people were thinking, uh oh, here we go. We're going to have another nasty, nasty dip in the market. But what happened? Well, this was this was last Friday. Let me open this up a little more. Last Friday, we we're coming down to the lows. And then this week, all this week, we bounced all the way back. I mean, we had a massive move higher this week. This was a big move back higher this week, which is really nice. Um, but so if you're really a technical trader, you would have saw this bounce off the 50 day moving average and think, you know, this would be a great opportunity to buy. The market's been in an uptrend, just having a normal pullback and it's ready to go again. So here was the, the signal that if you were looking to get long, this would have been your good entry. Now, if you're worried about COVID and worried about, well, what if it keeps falling? Well, then you don't go all in. You, you, well, I always say you nibble, you nibble a little bit, you buy a few shares, or whatever you want to do, sell a put option, buy a call option, but you don't go full force. You wait, or maybe you wait for the confirmation. So you wait and you saw it bounce and it bounced off the 50 day moving average. So these moving average lines really do act as support a lot of the time, especially the 50 day moving average. A lot of people follow the 50 day moving average. And when it starts to bounce, everyone jumps in because everyone's watching the same thing. Okay, so this little blip down was in the context of where the market's been not a big deal but it definitely scared a lot of people because it was covid related and there's also the other news narratives out there inflation the u.s federal reserve possibly going to raise interest rates soon so that scares people as well but in the long run the market will continue to go up the market always finds ways to go back up that's just how the market works Yes, we'll have the little dips along the way because of the news stories out there, but you can't stop the companies from making profitable products. And as long as companies are making profitable products, their earnings are going up, their stock price will go up. That's how the market works. So don't fear the, don't fear the down moves, okay? Yes, I understand we all have long positions on and those positions may be losing money while we have the dips, but, but if you play it properly and you're holding for the long term, then you know the market's going to come back. Now, if you're if you're if you're very short term and you're a scalper and you're intraday trader, that's that's very hard to do, very hard to do. The market's very volatile in that short term time frame, and I, I never really found success trying to do that for myself. I just couldn't do it. I need to go a little longer because I need the market to, you know, clear out the noise every now and again and and find its way higher. So that's the way I do it. Anyway, so that's the the S and P five hundred. Let's look at the NASDAQ, where we use the QQQ, the triple Qs, as our gauge for the NASDAQ. Same thing, just been moving higher, higher, higher within this long channel, okay? Hit the tops here, so how a little pullback. The pullback, right, as I talked about last Friday, not this Friday two days ago, but uh, nine days ago, we were on the lows here. This is when the Omicron came out, everyone got nervous. But look how it bounced. It bounced right off the 50-day moving average. And this week had the big gap up on Monday. And all this week was just higher. So the NASDAQ looks good too. And 
I, I know by the end of this year, in the next couple of weeks, we'll probably make more all-time new highs. Now, it does start to slow down a little bit in December, holidays and all, but I, I do believe that we're going to see more new all-time highs by the end of the year. Let's look at the Dow Jones, and we can use the diamonds. This is the DIA ETF for the Dow Jones. Dow Jones is a little bit, has been a little bit more flat uh, than the NASDAQ or the, or the triple Qs. That's only because there's, you know, there's only 30 stocks in the Dow, so I don't put much emphasis on the Dow Jones. Um, but, but, you know, it, it bounced right along with everything else. But this one bounced on the 200-day moving average. Here's the 200-day. So the Dow's a little bit off on its own, little own island than the, the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. So, uh, but the Dow looks strong, too. Bounced off the 200-day, got back above the 20-day and the 50 Looks like it's ready to go. Maybe it'll hit 370 um, before the end of the year. So that's the that's the Dow. So let's take a look at some individual stocks now, as we typically do. We look at the more popular stocks. Let's start with Apple because Apple had a good week this week. More all-time new highs for Apple. We talk about Apple a lot here. Apple had been very ugly, and it finally has this nice curvy nice curvy move higher and it just has gone ballistic just under 180 dollars a share all-time new highs for apple this right here was the congestion area had people if you were if you're willing to step in this was a congestion area telling you that it's probably getting ready for that next move higher and it really went from 150 up to about 180 so nice 30 dollar move in a short period of time the, the last time it took apple here's 150 from 120 so it took apple a really long time back in march went from 120 to 150 took a couple months but here it only took a couple weeks so apple was gearing up storing up this energy for a nice move higher so apple could be getting a little overbought here though now i'm not saying that the bull move is is over and that apple's never going to reach more no, more new all-time highs I'm just saying you can see the RSI getting a little bit into overbought areas, had a nice quick up move. So it may take a pause here, could take a pause here, pull back a little, let the moving averages catch up and then keep going higher. So this was a nice move, may have a little pause, but definitely Apple for the long run. It's going to go up in the long run. It has to. It makes billions of iPhones. P P billions of people have billions of iPhones and you can't stop Apple from having profitable quarters and that's what keeps the stock price going up okay so that's apple let's look at tesla as we always do tesla is a crazy stock i don't i sell some put options on tesla but way 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 out of the money it's just too crazy to try to trade things you know around its current price so we had tesla in this channel it just went ballistic over 1200 dollars a share and i drew the the congestion pattern last week, which typically means it's either going to blast to the upside or blast to the downside. But I had also said that the thousand dollar mark seemed to be a good support area for Tesla as well. Well, it came out downwards from the triangle here, came out to the downside, definitely went below a thousand, but caught itself very quickly. And once again, popped below a thousand, but but it finished yesterday or Friday, I should say at 1,017. So this $1,000 level still seems to be a good area of support, maybe even the 950. If we draw, we can draw another trend line here or support line right around 950. So, you know, now it maybe has duplicate support areas. You can draw trend lines. I mean, everybody sees something differently, okay? So nine, let's just say 950 to 1,000, probably good support area for Tesla. Um, thousand, maybe a little stronger, but anyway, Tesla is, it's hard to gauge where Tesla wants to go off of, you know, your typical indicators. Now I had drawn these channels, which, you know, helped us a little bit, but Tesla is just, just cra a crazy stock. It's not overbought, not oversold. So I have to believe the next move will pr probably be back to the upside. It's catching its support here. And if the rest of the market goes up, Tesla will probably go back up as well. As far as trading it, you know, stock options, it's a tough call. 
I sell put options way out of the money. I'm talking way down here, okay? So it keeps me keeps you away from danger. Trading it around here, it's very hard. You can get whipsawed out pretty good. I don't like to get involved in that whipsaw. So I stay away from Tesla for those kinds of trades. Uh, let's see what else we have. Let's go to Amazon. <clears throat> Amazon still stuck in the long channel, still stuck in here. Just can't find the the strength to <clears throat> continue on outside of the outside of the channel here it's it popped a couple times but just never had enough follow through so it's still back in here finding some support maybe along the 50 and the 200 day moving average you know the 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 200 days sloping upwards a little bit 50 days sloping upwards a little bit maybe it's sort of getting into this upwards trending channel and will finally blast outside of this other channel so it depends on how you look at it. You know, we could find some support here around 3,200. You know, you can even make a smaller, a smaller channel. You can draw another support line here. I mean, it all depends on how you want to do it. it. All depends on what you're seeing. You can, you can even draw a little uptrending channel here. Okay. And we can do one here basically as well. So maybe it's, maybe Amazon's in this, other channel um, there's lots of things you can look at on a chart you know not not everything what I'm seeing can be completely different what from what someone else sees in the eye of the beholder okay but but otherwise Amazon's still stuck in this range here and just needs to needs to get up over this you know 3600 mark and keep going Amazon so I don't have really much to say about that let's see what other stocks we have on the list here I want to show you a couple stocks. So Microsoft still strong, still strong, still bouncing off the the moving average. As you can see, how it bounced off the the 50-day moving average uh, from last Friday and, and uh, the Friday prior, and this week strong. Here's the all-time new highs. You know, Microsoft has just got a strong-looking chart. Just keeps going up. Look, let's look at Intel. <clears throat> Now, Intel has been in this down move. I talk about Intel versus AMD all the time, advanced micro devices. I like AMD a lot better. Intel, you know, five, 10 years ago, I would have been all about Intel. We sold put, we sold put options on Intel many times. I loved it. It was my go-to stock. But, you know, it just doesn't have that, that flair anymore, that, that strength that AMD has. So a Intel has been in this downtrend. We don't trade it much because I'm not finding any opportunities. But it had this little, it had this blip higher this week, blasted up. I'm not, I don't really remember what that was about, but it got knocked all the way back down again, right into the middle of where it had been trading. So I think, it had I think people who needed to sell this thing were was real happy when it jumped up, you know, four dollars a share, five dollars a share, and they sold it all the way back down. This whole week just got knocked all the way back down. So Intel still kind of stuck in this rut. I'm not. Nothing for me on Intel. AMD, though, I am getting a little excited because I love AMD. Had this nice power move higher. We weren't involved. Been waiting for a pullback. I think we may get get what we need here. Here's the 50-day moving average. And I think early next week, you know, tomorrow's Monday, it may catch up a little to the up-sloping 50-day moving average, maybe consolidate a little bit, and then run on from maybe all time new highs again. So I'm getting excited for AMD. Hopefully we can get into a trade there. Do I want to try to front run it? Maybe a little bit, you know, typically I think AMD would probably bounce if it connects with the, the 50 day moving average. But you know, that's only if you want to try to front run it, it could fall through it. Don't know. So maybe nibble a little bit, don't go all in, but I, I'm keeping an eye on this. Just like we talked about Disney, Disney the other week, Disney just had gotten hit really hard and got way oversold on the RSI. I had talked about Disney the other week. That could be a good time to start nibbling. And Disney definitely went has gone up from the low 140s to the low 150s. So it rallied about $10 in this span of a week or so. So that was a good trade there on Disney. We like Disney. We sold a uh, put spread on Disney. Let me see what else we have. Um, let's look at the typical stocks that I like to show you that why we don't like to try to pick bottoms all that much. And I use this all the time. This is Verizon as our example. 
I love Verizon, great company, largest cell phone carrier in the US and maybe around the world as well. But Verizon's still been in this downtrend. You know, if a stock's in a downtrend, what's the point of, of trying to get long? What's the point of trying to buy shares when it's in the, down, in the downtrend? It'll just frustrate you and it'll cause you grief and frustration and anger and it's not doing your money any good. So make sure you look at the charts because you want to get in on a stock. If you're bullish, you want to get on a stock that's moving higher, not moving lower. So Verizon had been moving lower, moving lower, had this big swoop down. This could have been good for a little a bullish scalp, you know, quickly, because if you didn't get out here, now you're holding and now you're now it's below where you got in earlier. So trying to pick bottoms is hard unless you're willing to get out quickly. OK, you could have said I wanted to buy here or here or here or here. And it, and it, and it's key, it keeps going down. Could have bought here. Quick scalp up if you had to be quick. And now it's down again. So Verizon, I'm not ready to get in yet because it's just still going down. Let's look at Clorox also. We look at Clorox. Clorox was a darling in the early days of the pandemic, was going up, and then it's just been in this downtrend here, but has been in the sideways channel. See all these channels that I'm drawing? This is what helps you figure out when a stock may be ready to get out and move in a different direction. Clorox still stuck on the sideways action. It's good because it's not going down anymore. So it's finding support, finding support. I have to believe the next move for Clorox will be to the upside when it finally breaks below, I mean above the the channel up the channel upper end here. And if it gets above this downtrending 200 day moving average. Clorox between 175 and 180 could be the clue or cue that maybe the uptrend is starting. So I'm watching Clorox, keep an eye on Clorox. Let's also look at Colgate. I'm getting a little excited about Colgate as well. Colgate, it's been all over the place, was in this downtrending channel, but has moved outside of it. What I like here about Colgate is it has popped above the, let me open this up a little more, popped above the 200 day moving average, which is right here. So it's above the 20 day, above the 50 day, getting above the 200 day, that's very powerful. Okay, so let's let's bring this in so you can kind of see what Clark's Colgate is doing. This is Colgate. Uh, I like how it popped above the 200 day moving average. So keep an eye on Colgate. This could be the start of, of the next bullish run for Colgate. This is what the charts can help you decide if a stock is ready to go or not. Uh, let's see what else we have. Uh, Walmart, definitely wanna look at Walmart. We drew the support line right around 135 and it has tested that level a number of times. And most recently this past week got down to 135 and change and bounced up, had a good day on Friday, sitting just below the, this, the 200 day moving average right here. So we'll see if it if it gets hit resistance and, and drops back down again. But but I had bought some on this last move here. I didn't get any here. I was waiting for it to hit 135. Missed that. So we'll see what happens but with Walmart. But we know Walmart's a great company. I don't think it could stay down here for very long. I have to believe Walmart will finally end up making new all-time highs at some point in the near future. Maybe not near future, but in the next few months, probably Walmart will... After the holiday season, we'll see how the sales are and see how Walmart did, and that'll dictate where the stock goes. We can sort of see a little double bottom here, maybe a little W pattern here, um, but I'm keeping an eye on Walmart. Let's see what else we got. Uh, was Target doing anything? Target, um, eh, nothing, getting down to the 200-day moving average, nothing on Target for me. Let's look at, now some of the, the farmer stocks, Pharma, Eli Lilly, Bristol Myers, we talked about that one, unfortunately, is coming down again. Uh, we have a play on Merck. Merck is, is puzzling to me. I'm surprised it's been so weak, so weak. Uh, we sold some put options on Merck, still down below here. Um, so we're just watching this one. I, I, I hope that we've hit some, some oversold area on Merck. I, I'd like to see this thing bounce a little bit, but... You know, this one was, was been tough. I don't like to see Merck getting hit so hard. What else? Kellogg. Kellogg just kind of not doing much. 
pay uh, let's talk about paypal on square paypal has been in the downtrend like i love paypal on square i love the payment sector but it's it's still in this downtrend for me so i'm not ready to jump in yet had the little bounce off off oversold areas but you can see how it's it sort of got rejected at the 20 day moving average and and had a down day on friday so there could be some more downside uh to to paypal this week it could could drop a little more i'm not ready to jump in yet square same thing they're in the same square and paypal they're they're running side by side same sector square has been getting hit um got a little oversold here did have the bounce but just like paypal yet friday was uh, a down day here so there could be some more downside for the payment sector what else we have Oh, uh, mcdonald's let's look at mcdonald's and pepsi because they're, they're very similar charts they're both strong you can see the nice curved up move sometimes these are hard to these are hard to describe but it just has a nice smooth curved look about it and that that is a bullish sign at least from the chart the way that i see the charts i can't really describe what kind of pattern that is it's just when you look at hundreds of thousands of charts over time like i have you can see this kind of nice rounded up move now McDonald's ha had a nice blast higher. It could be ready for a little bit of a pullback and then continue on. Uh, but M McDonald's very strong here. Pepsi has sort of the same chart. It, let's open this up. Kind of has not as smooth as McDonald's, but is, is still going strong. It's above the 20 day, above the 50 day. Everything's sloping upwards. So Pepsi is definitely strong on the next pullback. It probably would be a good time to nibble for another leg higher. Watch when earnings are coming out. You always want to make sure you know when earnings are coming out because that's something you need to be careful about. But Pepsi McDonald's sort of has this nice, they, 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 they look nice, okay? They look like nice uptrending charts. Um, <clears throat> let's take a look. Twitter, social media, Twitter. We, we've sold puts on Twitter before kind of in this downtrend here I'm not ready to pull the trigger yet on Twitter it did get very oversold here very oversold it was good for a scalp you bought here but you had to get out you got to be quick if you want to scalp uh, Friday was a down day so it's Twitter not so much yet it's 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 got this you know it's sort of in this it's in this it's in the down channel right here. Okay, so you got to watch it, watch it. It may have the next move maybe down to the bottom leg of the down channel. So unless it breaks out sideways here outside of the channel and starts to move up until I start to see that activity for now, staying away from Twitter, <clears throat> Facebook. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Facebook. Uh, try to stay away from that. IBM, Google. Uh, the meme stocks, GameStop, AMC. I'm not. I'm not really doing much on those. I just keep them on here on my charts for whatever reason. I don't really watch these. Let's take a look at the the Bitcoin stocks. Riot. Now, Riot. Uh, we we we. I gave out an unofficial trade on Friday on Marathon Digital Holdings. Mara. I'll take a look at that chart quick. But 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 Mara and Riot, same sector. They're Bitcoin related. So we've got a little bit of support here. I don't know if it's going to pop through it or not. Uh, this is this is Riot. Uh, could drop below, but I like Mara better. We we did a sold a put option on Mara because it is sloping upwards, but had a big pullback coming on support near the 200-day up sloping 200-day moving average. The, the slope of the moving averages are very important as well. Are they upsloping or downsloping? Okay. So we got in, sold some put options unofficially on Mara, way out of the money. And so let's see how that works out. And what else we have? Peloton. Peloton got knocked down again. People are asking me, is it time to buy Peloton? Trying to pick bottoms. Picking bottoms are hard. Peloton still in the down. Friday, bad day on Friday, made another new low here. So Peloton, and let's look at the monthly chart. 
for Peloton so you can really get a gauge of where it's been, what's happened. So Peloton came out towards the end of 2019, had a hot, awesome move up to you know, $170 a share or so, but has been knocked back down below 40, up and down. Where's the bottom? I don't know, maybe maybe $20, it could find some support. If you're, if you're interested, maybe you look to price out selling some put options on Peloton, you know, another 50% haircut, $20 strike. Who knows? I don't even know what, what they're trading for these days. Not a recommendation, not a re recommendation here, just something to think about. Uh, what else? I think that's about all. <clears throat> Whoopsie, get up there. And let's move this back over as well. Sometimes this thing moves on me. eBay, uh, we have some put options that we sold on eBay. Uh, this thing needs to hold very quickly here. It's just hovering around the 200-day moving average. The the RSI kind of getting a little curve to the upside here. So maybe the selling's over. Maybe we'll get a pop from eBay. But I'd like to say see eBay jump up here. Anyway, all right, so that's it. Let's take a look at the S&P 500 one more time here. <clears throat> Give a final, a final synopsis. I like the market heading into the end of the year. Yeah, we have to keep an eye on, on COVID and inflation and all, but those are those are things that will should work themselves out over time. Okay, but trading very very short term is hard to do. Over the long run, we know the market goes up, so uh, we look for the bounces off the moving average lines or the channels. And we saw that right here, bounce off the 50-day moving average. All right, so that's it for your, your synopsis here. Let's quickly go to our website, smartoptionseller.com. We talk a lot about put selling. That's what we do. We're option sellers. Basically, put option sellers, put option spread sellers. You want to know more about put option selling? Get our free guide, Put Selling Basics. Go to our website, smartoptionseller.com. Click on Put Selling Basics. Scroll down. You can read through some of the testimonials. Put your name and email address here. We'll send you a free copy. And what are the things we offer? Right here, services tab. We have two newsletters and our one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you need some help getting to the next level, we can help coach you. All right, that's it. In this YouTube video, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that red subscribe button, bottom right-hand corner. Give me a thumbs up if you think this information is useful, helpful. Uh, I like to do these for free. I like to help you. Leave me a comment, send me an email, and, and that's about all I've got to say for today. All right, it is Sunday, so tomorrow's new trading week. Getting towards the end of the year, so things may slow down a bit. But anyway, have a good rest of your weekend, and have a great trading week ahead. This is Lee Lowell signing off.